Hello and welcome to the Metapod Podcast, Pokemon podcast that revolves around the evolving meta. Another day in the life of Pokemon TCG podcast hosts, Jake and Sean. Sean, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm all rested. I have rest. I have haircut. I have all the things. What I don't have, Jake, what I don't have is any Lost Origin cards. Well, that's funny because I, I have Lost Origin cards, but oh. I have no rest. I have no <laughs> rest whatsoever. I've worked like 40 hours in the last like two and a half days. Oh, my and God. It's, uh, it's thankfully all over, you know, doing pod post stuff but holy smokes i'm tired but yeah i opened up a lost origin booster box and um it was pretty doggone good in my opinion i i had 14 hits oh, overall nice 14 i feel like that's pretty good i know like with the trainer gallery hit rates are much higher but without the trainer gallery i got four five six seven eight nine hits that's it's a nine hit box outside the trainer gallery so it's pretty good box yeah well also the hits that you got jake yeah, the hits that I got That's were good, too. First of all, I got a Full Art Supporters, which is awesome. It's the Misfortune Sisters, so it's not going to be the most valuable thing in the world, but it's still really cool. It in helps my with opinion. your collection. It helps. I like shiny Pokemon, and I got two uh -huh. Radiant Pokemon in there, so I always like getting the, the Radiance, even though they have the yellow border anyways. But <laughs> the big hits in the uh, in the regular part, not the Trainer Gallery, I got a 1-1 one, one line of Tina, Garatina V and V-Star, which is super good because Garatina, very playable card, very popular card. And yep. uh, I already have a 1-1 one, one line, even though I probably won't ever play Tina because it'll be the most expensive deck from the format. Well, but you're already, like, from what I hear, from what I hear, Jake, you may only need a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-2 line. And you know what, Sean? That's a great time to mention that because we are going to talk about some early Lost Origin release uh, lists. Sets, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Some, some early some, sets. Some early lists and things yeah. like that. And then the Trainer Gallery. I got the one Trainer Gallery card that I was really, really hoping for. I got the Sleeping Pikachu oh. character rare card. I don't know if it's going to focus on the camera, but... Um, it's, this is like the only card that I wanted from the trainer gallery and I got it. And then I got the gold, you Pikachu got the gold Chonkachu. Which is, yeah, which is also cool. But the, like the trainer gallery, Pikachu sleeping is the, like, yeah, that was my hit card. I pulled that and I was like, oh man, so cool. And we talked about a bunch of the other cards that are in this set as well in last week's episode. So please, if you Go check that out. Go listen to that. And uh, Sean, are we ready to go into? Yeah, the five star review. Yes, the five star review. All right, Sean. This one is short and sweet and to the point because I'm tired. I don't need to be <laughs> reading a long time. This is a great one by Taco Truck 09. It's a five star review titled "Amazing Pod." I love the pod. I love it. Short, sweet, to the point. I love the review as well. And if you want to leave a review as well for us, please go ahead and do it. Whether it's one star or five stars, tell us how we're doing. If you like it, if you don't like it, some suggestions, what we could do as well. I know some people were giving us suggestions in the YouTube comments about changing audio levels, maybe turning us up a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, based on at least on youtube so i'll probably try to do that here for this episode so let me know how it is anyways sean jake what is the first thing that you want to talk about today because you made the blessed list of topics for I today's did. thing because i'm too busy working i will say for those of you who want to see every tidbit of news, I made the list today and I am, I think, more selective than Jake in some ways. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff from GameStop about GameStop exclusive things. Uh, I just wanted to focus on one specific GameStop exclusive and that is the Arceus V-Star Ultra Premium Collection. Um, this is, like I said, a GameStop exclusive. This is similar to all the other Ultra Premium Collections we've gotten, which is like, it has like those metal dice, uh, that are going to be your damage counters. It mm -hmm. looks like it's probably a metal coin as well. This one, I believe, comes with this Arceus playmat, if I'm correct. Yes, it yeah. is a metal coin and a playmat. And then this one also comes with a one. Is it a one one line or is it a two two? 
it's a 1-1 line, but it's a 1-1 line of metal cards of Arceus V and oh. V-Star in there. So, so you can't even play with them? No, you can't play with them, Sean, unfortunately. Mm. But you get some cool, like, because Arceus is a cool Pokemon, right? It's the god yeah. Pokemon. Like, it's literally the Pokemon of Pokemon, so... Yeah, um, but like getting another like metal card is pretty cool. I, mean, I wonder how metal it is, though. I mean, I don't know. I didn't get the uh, metal cards that came in one of the other sets, I believe. Like they, they yeah. had one with like, um, I think Charizard and stuff like that in it. Mm -hmm. But it's weird to me. And maybe this is just a mock up image and the actual product might look different. But it's weird that they are using the regular arts of the RCS V star and the RCS instead of like either an alternate art or the gold version that they've used in the past. Um, and you know, for those of you who want to know what else you get in this, you get 15 booster packs. That's like the thing you can, I guess, do stuff with still only an acrylic V star marker. I'm like metal V star marker. When they really just don't want you to do that. <laughs> they don't want you emphatically em emphatic. Uh, what's that word? Is that yeah, the emphatically. right word? Yeah. Yeah. You're emphatically right. Emphatically right. flipping over your V star marker and slamming it into your opponent, injuring them. Yes. You, I, know. you know, perhaps, or, or they don't want like, you know, this isn't pogs. Those of you who know back in the day, you'd have a slammer, right? So mm -hmm. they, they don't want it to be a slammer anyways. Um, but you know, some of the stuff is cool. I wish, I really wish they gave you actual playable cards though too, because like the metal stuff is nice, but like, ah, I feel like it's a miss, especially since this is going to cost a minimum of 99 if you can get it, of like a hundred bucks basically, if you can get it at retail, um, which like, look, 15 packs is, is fine and all, but that's less than, less, is it less than half or about half a booster box? Yeah, 16, so, 16 is, or 15 is less because the booster box is 36. 32. So oh, 36, yeah, yeah. So it's a little less than half booster box. You get a couple of premium products with it, but I don't know. Throw throw in the regular cards too. That's my only thought. But Jake, what do you think? Um, This product would be a lot cooler if the playmat wasn't like a stock image yeah. of Arceus. I don't know. I look at this playmat and it it just looks like something that's been copied and pasted. It doesn't necessarily scream to me original. I mean, I'm buying an ultra premium collection box. Yeah. Right. The only premium collection box of RCS V star. And it's got a very underwhelming play mat. Like I just, it's a little sad and that's kind of like, that's and it's not even considered the bulk of what you're buying. The bulk of what you're buying is like the metal cards, the V and V star. And again, we don't know what that quality is. The dice, even though they're metal and cool, they also just kind of feel like dice that they found <laughs> extra somewhere. You know, they don't have like a design on them or anything like that. Like, mm. I don't know. I just it feels overall like a very underwhelming product. Like the most effort was put into the casing. And like you were saying about the V and the V star, like not having like alternate arts or being golds or whatever. And who knows, maybe maybe the images on Pokey Beach that we're looking at right now are not actually, maybe. you know, the, the uh, rarity of cards, yeah. you could say. Yeah, you know, the final images. But if it's just those two, like the regulars, like, I don't know, it's... I mean, I passed on the other one, so I'd probably pass on this too. I mean, the fact that we've already had a, an, an RCS premium collection, right? The with the with the yeah. we had the figurine that yeah. came with the alternate art version of the RCS card. I have that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, they've already done an RCS product, which is great, and like, so they're doing another one, and it feels like if I actually had to pick between the two, I would pick the other one over this one. Yeah, I kind of picked the figure if yeah. I hadn't gotten it already. So. But, and, and I think it's really, my opinion is it's also, it's difficult for this announcement of this box because, Jake, the next product I want to talk about is not a GameStop exclusive, but it is another ultra premium collection. This and, one is a lot cooler, though. We've talked yeah. about this one already on the podcast. The Charizard V, VMAX, and V Star promos are revealed in the Sword and Shield Ultra Premium Collection. You remember that episode where I tried to guess what the mystery premium collection pokemon was and i for some reason didn't think of charizard well this is the product that we're talking about 
Remember, this is going to be releasing on October 28th for $120 MSRP. I guarantee if you try to get this at any other secondhand store or whatever, you are going to pay way more than $120 for this product because the three etched promo foil cards, Charizard V, VMAX, and V-Star are absolutely gorgeous. I know for the audience that can't see the images that we're showing right now, if you're listening on like Apple iTunes or something like that, let me tell you that these are probably like these all three of these are definitely in like top seven to ten charizard cards in yeah. my opinion yeah and okay. i'm not one to i'm not one to collect charizards or really like charizards but i i kind of want all three of these promos sean yeah the hand-drawn nature of the charizard v um mm -hmm. i think somebody showed this with a picture of i think it was the golurk Mm -hmm. v alternate art card yes yeah and like i think it's probably the same artist right it's the same it's the same art style i believe it's the same artist and it's yeah. kind of like the same picture because the go lurk or it's kind of the same story i guess you know how some yeah cards he's carrying like the, uh, pieces tell a story of wood. yeah carrying the wooden stuff and so you know charizard laying in the field that is broken and and all that jazz and a bag and of chips if you look at this super close up i don't know if you notice this jake but you see what's in the background there that's a Venusaur over it's there. It's got you're getting a twofer. You're getting a Charizard yeah. and a Venusaur in this art. Absolutely. Sucks to be Blastoise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then I gotta do a quick. Oh Lord, I gotta I gotta quickly go back to a different page because it loaded I the image. I will say separate. I think the V Max though is my favorite of the three because the V Max it's Gigantamax Charizard V Max and like. The Gigantamax Charizard VMAX was cool when it first came around in, mm -hmm. what was that, Darkness Ablaze or something yes, like that? Yes, correct. Um, that card was cool, but this card is like 10 times cooler. I didn't, You didn't think it was going to get cooler, but it got way, way cooler. It's just much more sinister. There's like, it's softer colors and softer lines blended together, but it feels like there's so much more detail right especially when you talk about the uh the gigantamax rings that hang around the tail they mm -hmm. they have such pristine details but the fire is so like mixed it is such yeah. a cool card like this card is going to be worth a lot of money unfortunately for me <laughs> for those of you who can't see it, it's, gi it's gigantamax charizard he looks like he's standing on top of sort of a mountain ridge type thing mm -hmm. swirling clouds all around him fire everywhere and then like kind of like it's got this cool rain effect, like where rain is sort of pouring down all around him as he breathes fire. It just it's a great yeah. look. It's a great look. It's like I don't I don't know if it's rain, but it's like intensity. It's yeah. drama. It's just it adds to this effect of like, whoa, like yep. this is this is big, bad dude. And then finally, finally, you got the Charizard V star, which is a, a completely different art style also. Mm -hmm. And I think this was the fan favorite from what I noticed on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, look, the art style on this is very specific. It's distinct. It's a mm -hmm. little, in my opinion, I actually think the art style is a little busy for a card. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a little, my, like, ADHD can't figure out where I want to look. Like, <laughs> right, like, it, the perspective is kind of, like, from above. It's a little hard to, and also, I will say, if you played, if you play with this card at all, I will say, baller, mm -hmm. you are baller, but... If you do play with this card, it's actually, at least in the images that we see online, it's kind of hard to read. Yeah, it's, a, it's you so got to know what it does. You better yeah. know what it does. But, and I mean, the art is really cute, really good. I think it's a really, really beautiful card. And I think it's a really, really cool card, too, because like you have Charizard in there fighting with Mewtwo. You've got Tangrowth actually in the back above Mewtwo. And Sean, did you see where the Diglett was? Oh, I did. I did. The little Diglett next to the weakness. He's just like, oh, golly. And it's yeah. just, it, it looks really, really good. And it's got the more cartoony style as well, which is much mm -hmm. different than the realism kind of style in the Charizard VMAX. So very, very, I mean, these are, the all three of these cards are just beautiful in my opinion and look really, really good. Like, like mm, I'm not a Charizard guy and I don't buy these premium collections a lot, but oh this is tough sean <laughs> yeah no these these are really cool these this one comes out at the end of this uh at the end of october it's supposed to be 120 as jake said i've even mm -hmm. seen people like 
uh, different people being like, we're going to raffle off the opportunity to buy this at MSRP. Yeah, that's which, a new Twitter trend that's happening right now. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so wait, 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 wait. Don't I can... worry, you get to buy into the raffle to be able to buy it for $120. Bruh. I mean, like, that's a bit, that's a bit much, but like, I mean, get your money, get your money. And people, if you jump into that, there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with jumping into that or running those. Sure. Just if you're getting into it, make sure you know what you're getting into. But like, I've seen other people trying, like, you know, selling this like pre-sale stuff for like 200, 250, like in that range mm -hmm. does not surprise me. I think, you know, if you really want the cards and you don't care about keeping a sealed thing or anything like that you probably will be able to pick up each of these for maybe less than a sealed mm -hmm. um, each of these promos. It's still going to be expensive, but I think this Jake, for, when, I, when I compare this to the Arceus, right? It's just, it is miles better. Like yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that I would much rather prefer the Charizard. Like it's, it's just looks so better and eventually we're going to also um be getting the uh the rcs v star ultra premium collection so the product that we talked about previously is not in association with the one that i just mentioned just now rcs v star ultra premium collection it's going to be kind of that same style i think we talked about it in a previous week on the podcast mm -hmm. so yeah i mean cool stuff i'll be interested to see i don't think that this art has appeared in japan yet I don't think that there's been any sets with this art in it. It is presumably, we don't know exactly for sure, but the assumption is that they're going to come in VSR universe in Japan. Ah, um, and that releases set. in December. Yeah. So yep. that would make sense. Um, we also know that there are other VSTAR cards in that set, like uh, Origin Form Dialga Palkia, Hisuian Zorark, alternate versions of Mewtwo VSTAR, Suicune V, Leafeon V also in that uh v star universe set so nice again those 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 things are great i mean in this product as well the charizard or i'm sorry the sword and shield ultra premium collection or you could call the charizard ultra premium collection because it's it is charizard yeah. you get a bunch of other things as well you get a play mat featuring gigantamax charizard which i don't think we have an image of yet at least from yeah. what i can see as of right now Hopefully it's not a stock image though, although I think the cards are well enough reason to buy this product because you also what if get it's this 16. Image? If it's that one, I'm buying it in a heartbeat. I don't care <laughs> if it's a literal copy and paste of that image, I'm buying it. Of the If it's the image of the VMAX. You yeah. get 16 booster packs from the Sword and Shield series, so a variety of different sets in the Sword and Shield era. You get two metal condition markers, six metal damage counter dice, a metal coin featuring Gigantamax Charizard, 65 card sleeves as well. And Sean, your personal favorite, the acrylic V-Star marker. <laughs> Bruh, everything says metal. And then you get to acrylic, and I'm like, Ah, I don't too know. dangerous. If, if they need if Poke, if the Pokemon company needs help, reach out to TC Evolutions, not sponsored, but like if you need the, the metal. <laughs> If you need help making those Pokemon, I can, I know the I know the place. Anyway, just do it. But this is I mean this is a cool product. This is the product that's gonna. I I looked on the Pokemon Center uh, website as you were talking, Sean. Mm -hmm. Sorry to not pay attention to you, but <laughs> it is not listed currently right now on the website that I can see. I don't believe it's there. So. I would assume that it's going to be there eventually. I mean, you can already pre-order Silver Tempest, um, the okay. set that we talked about the other week. Um, yeah, you can already pre-order a booster box and packs as well. So that's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, what yeah. else we got today, Sean, Mr. Host? Well, it is a, uh, I think it's going to be a shorter day, but I think the only thing we're going to do today is uh look at a couple of set lists deck lists i should say for new lost origin decks so there mm -hmm. hasn't really been a lot of tournaments um the set has only been on tcgo for a couple of days at this point i mean now especially with the you know the the play pokemon tour a lot of people are transitioning their focus out of online tournaments and stuff to irl play both organizers and uh players alike so yeah but sean 
which which uh the tournament that you tagged me in that first place deck can we can we look at that first place deck we can indeed jake we can indeed so this was at the la league at the liga inter number six i don't actually know who runs this but um uh yeah it was one of the tournaments that i i saw that people were allowing lost origin and a lost origin deck specifically won this tournament about like 60 some odd players so you know, grains of salt all around, but... Hey, but I mean, it's the first weekend of the format. That's like, right. we just want to see cool decks, right? That's right. So, Jake, what, what kind of deck am I looking at here? Uh... Uh, when you put it on screen, Sean, I will tell you that this is a deck archetype that both you and I agree that it's probably not going to be that good. And look, 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 it is the first weekend. But I will say, out of all the decks that I watch, because even when I was working, sometimes I got a Twitch stream up, right? I was able to watch uh, several Azul and Andrew Mahone and Little Dark Fury and stuff, streams and stuff. This, in my opinion, was like the most fun deck mm -hmm. out of all of them, Sean. It is Hisuian Zorark V-Star. Very, very cool that this deck uh, has been doing well. So Sean, what does Hisuian Zorark V-Star do for anyone who doesn't know off the top of their head? Well, it has a V-Star power that's an ability and an attack. I'll start with the attack. The attack is Ticking Curse, does 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So it maxes out base at 300 damage. If each of your Pokemon, including itself, has a, at least one damage counter, you're doing 300. If you're using something like a double turbo energy, obviously that goes down to 280, but mm -hmm. 280 is knocking out any V-Star. Yeah, know, it's still doing a lot part. of damage. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. So, uh, And then the ability, Phantom Star, which I don't, I don't think there's any other V-Stars in the deck, so I think if you're going to use a V-Star power, you're, you'll use this at some point. Yes. It's uh, during your turn, you may discard your hand and draw seven. It's a professor's research as an ability. It is a free research. And Sean, let me tell you, with that V-Star power, mm -hmm. along with this Gengar. So pull up that Gengar real quick. I'll tell you about this Gengar. So we kind of talked about this Gengar, right? We talked about it a little bit. If you are unfamiliar with what it is, Stage 2 Gengar, 120 HP Psychic Pokemon. Has this really, really cool ability called netherworld gate once during your turn if this pokemon is in your discard pile you may put it onto your bench if you do put three damage counters on it yep i don't know why but i didn't think to putting this into the zorark deck when we <laughs> talked last week about this card yeah i don't know how i didn't think of it sean but this is uh you play a two of of this gengar or at least this specific player did that we're going over their deck list um it is Con Micra? I don't know. Uh, this is a Brazilian tournament. This is an American player, so I don't know exactly who you are, but congratulations. We're going to look at your deck. <laughs> so putting the uh, putting the Pokemon down onto the bench, you know, getting those three damage counters on it, you know, a free Pokemon, essentially. You know, you discard it with the research of your own, Quick Ball, Ultra Ball, whatever, you know, the Hisuian Zorark ability. And then also you've got other Pokemon in this not only do you have a 4-4 line of Fisui and Zork, you've also got the mysterious tail Mew that we saw in celebrations arguably the best card from celebrations right Sean so yep. you put that sucker down on the field you've got some crowbats two of them specifically in this list you put them down on the field crowbat v and then a luminion v as well if you need to go get a supporter for any reason that's a lot of other pokemon filling up your bench spots and you may be thinking well, Jake, Sean, Gengar, only two of them in the deck. That means that you only get two Pokemon with damage counters on it. Sean, what is the card in the list that puts damage counters on your other Pokemon? Well, actually, there's, there's two. two of them. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's two, two cards. of them. So let's go over one of them. Uh, the first one, and I, I this, this card just i think absolutely yeah um, we didn't we didn't think about it we did not yeah. talk about this card <laughs> there's four cards uh, of this copy and it feels like this one it it mostly is for the sisui and Zor zorark deck but it, maybe mm -hmm. in a future deck somewhere it makes sense but it's a uh, damage pump you move up to two damage counters from one of your pokemon to your other pokemon in any way you like so if you put the uh, the gengar down that's three damage counters you play one of these 
you can move two of those damage counters to two different Pokemon from the mm -hmm. one Gengar. So really, that, that spreads it around to two more. And it doesn't say bench. So if you actually do double Gengar, two damage pumps, that's all six of your Pokemon with damage counters. And there you go. Like, it doesn't there, take... Yeah, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, it's crazy, though, because you can go from no damage counters to all six of your Pokemon having one damage counter uh, without having to play any supporters necessarily, without having to do any sort of shenanigans. So that's a four of in the list, which is also why you have the Mew, I think, to find this, to yeah, find Yeah, to find those damage pumps. Yep. And those uh, uh, discard effects. Exactly. And then the, the other card that there's a couple of in the deck is a Stadium, which is a Gapejaw Bog. Whenever either player puts a basic Pokemon from their hand onto their bench, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So this is doing double duty. You're doing damage mm -hmm. counters that you need on yours. And if you get it out early and it sticks, it does damage to your opponent's Pokemon too, which might set up the math if you need it. And it also kind of helps, you know, alleviate the combos, right? You know, if you have the Gengar to come out on the field, but you don't have the damage pump, right? You can have Gape Jog Bog on the field and be able to put damage counters on those Pokemon that you do put on the field. The Bench Hisui and Zorark V, the Mew, the Crobat, the Luminion, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you a little bit of flexibility and you're not like a one trick pony, right? Um, yeah. Now, in this scenario now what i would say about this list so the list otherwise it's pretty straightforward it's heavy bosses orders three bosses two research two marnie mm -hmm. um i understand why would they have the luminion because this deck seems to have the strategy of i can't waste attacks on things that don't matter and the reason mm -hmm. for that is you've only have four energy in the whole deck and they're double turbos so none of your other things can even attack like you can't get a cheeky Gengar off or a cheeky Luminion off or anything like that. So, you know, it, you have four double turbos and that's it. Uh, so you need to make your attacks count basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I can and then also, that. also, I mean, there are plenty of times, at least when I was watching this, where you specifically want to boss's orders, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you got the attack off early and you didn't your opponent didn't get a KO in the in their turn on the Pokemon. You yeah. want to go chase, you know, the three prize Pokemon that you had whacked into or something like that. Or maybe the the uh two prize V Star that has the big charm and or whatever. Um so he, the boss is very, very important, which is another reason why you have the Luminion in there. So then you could go get the boss right away. Um, but I mean, this deck goes, this deck goes fast. It plays the Mew shoes, right? It's yep. basically a turbo build at that point. You get the professor's research and then another research on top of it with the V star ability. Like this deck is cracked. It is so cool in my opinion, Sean. Yeah. So long as I will say this deck, so long as the meta remains very top end heavy, like, mm -hmm. then I think this deck definitely can do very well. Um, obviously, this is not the case. Early metas don't ever have this, but... This I think, is literally yeah. week one. <laughs> but I, I would say one thing that this deck might have to evolve a little bit of is um, if anybody were to play, like, the Eveltal that gets rid of the energies, there's mm -hmm. nothing in this deck to reco recover your double turbos. So any amount of control, um, or, to be frank... I think if this deck were to face a single prize deck, I also think it would str struggle quite mightily um, just because you don't have really any backup attacking things. Mm -hmm. You you might end up starting something like a Crobat or a Luminion because, you know, you've got three weird... Yeah, so, you know, grains of salt with, with all of this stuff, but th that's my opinion on it. But yeah, you're, you're right. It does go very fast. I think it's one of those things, too, though, that like the meta is so diverse mm -hmm. that it's like, OK, if you hit the one person that's got enough guts to play Mewtwo V Union Milk Tank, then fine. Like, yeah. sure. You face a Milk Tank deck. OK, fine. Scoop whatever <laughs> you face, you know, Reggie Gigas, you try your best, but it's like, OK, you know, you just do what you can. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking to see. Uh... Yeah, if you if somebody throws down one mill tank against you, yeah, you're you're GGs. done, bud. You're done. So, 
that's the only <laughs> thing that I would start to say. Like, there might be space in this deck to like play around with it. I think this is a per this is a perfect early format consistency version that mm -hmm. you can then tweak. You know, and I think there's space in here personally. You know, I don't know. Like, I get you want to go fast, but I don't know if two crowbats is too many, right? It might might be that one crowbat is fine. Um, I think one... I will say that the games that I watched, um, you definitely crowbat your first turn. I feel like I saw more mm. often than not from players. Uh, yeah, that's fair. But like, I think you crowbat the first turn. But for me, I'm like the second turn and the third turn or whatever. You're gonna have Luminion if you need to draw or find like Research or Marnie. You have the ability on the Zorark. You have Trekking Shoes. You've got a bunch of Ball Search. You've got the Mew. Personally, I think that's a space. And then mm -hmm. I also I get that the Energy Lotto is kind of a get out of jail card in case you just are missing a double turbo, but it's only a one of. And I'm kind of like, I don't know if you really need to guarantee something. If like a appears is maybe just better. Mm -hmm. You can go get the double turbo and the crowbat all at once, but you know, uh, I don't know. Lots of lots of opportunity here, but but we can move on. Jay, Sean, let's talk about uh, let's talk about another deck. The specifically this one that got um, fifth, I believe, in mm -hmm. this tournament. It is another deck from Lost Origin. Yeah, it's the one that I pulled. I've got the one one line already. If you remember at the beginning of this episode, Garatina V-Star. This is the poster child of the Lost Origins set, and people are excited about it. It's a really cool deck. Sean, can you remind everyone what uh, Garatina V-Star does? Because it's pretty good, I would say. Yeah, pretty cracked. Uh, yeah, for a Grass Psychic Colorless, Lost Impact does 280 and you put two of the energy attached to your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. It does not have to be the energy attached to the Giratina V-Star. So, yeah, 280 damage, as we said. It's a big number. That's actually the exact amount of HP that Giratina V-Star has, um, which is beefy, but also important because Giratina V-Star doesn't have a weakness. So, yes. <laughs> like, you're either, you know, you're Fairy either... Fairy Pokemon are dead. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and then it's V-Star Power uh, for a Grass and a Psychic, so just two energy. You can use this attack only if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. So, you know, probably a mid to late game attack. But if you meet those requirements, you just get the free KO. So a perfect way to, like, if you're, like, up against it, mid to late game, you know, you've, you don't really have an easy way to get three energy on board. Well, with a Raihan or any number of other strategies, you can get two energy on board pretty easy. Boom, take that knockout, maybe your last two or three prizes, uh, and, and call it a game. So There's also another way to accelerate energies onto Garatina, especially mid to late game. Sean, let's take a look at Mirage Gate. Uh, yeah. This card is an item card in the set, a four of, in my opinion. You can only use this item card, though, if you have seven or more cards in the Lost Zone. And so after we talk about this card, we'll talk about some easy ways to get cards in the Lost Zone in this archetype. But in Mirage Gate, if you use it, search your deck for up to two basic energy cards of different types and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you'd like. Then shuffle your deck. So, Sean, if it's mid to late game, you probably have seven cards in the Lost Zone at this point. So, boom, you slap down the Mirage Gate. You can accelerate the two energies and then attach one more from your hand to be able to uh, qualify for that attack, that big honking 280. And plus, right, if you get those energies on early in the early game, those two energies that you put in the Lost Zone count towards that getting to that seven if mm -hmm. that makes sense that can help you get to the seven to be able to mirage gate later in the game but sean we keep talking about the lost zone for those of you that don't know there are two different places really that used cards essentially go in the pokemon training card game there's the discard pile which most people know but especially for the newer players you might not know this there's a place called the lost zone it is basically a put this card in this pile and you can never interact with it again. Yes. The only things that interact with the Lost Zone is simply seeing 
how many cards are in the lost zone and so yeah like how many cards or how many kinds of a card are in the lost zone uh, and i will say for the newer players who did not play uh you know in 2019 or earlier the way that people typically at tournaments would place their cards in the lost zone uh for anybody who you will be experiencing this now usually you would put it underneath at the time we had the gx marker mm -hmm. so you would put the cards from your law zone underneath your gx marker so right now you would do it underneath your v-star marker exactly essentially so it's usually like yeah that's that's where people usually put the cards now i guess you don't have to put them there but it was a nice way so that they you make sure they don't get mixed up with your discard pile by accident and people would also almost always put them sideways so mm -hmm. instead of being front on so for those of you listening or, or watching, uh, if this is the first time you're experiencing this mechanic, there you go. You can look like a pro when you go to your uh, your tournaments. Just watch like the 20 matches from the 2019 World Championships. Yep. Blacephalon GX was a great deck. I mean, it, w it was a great deck in my opinion. I love that deck a lot. I played it a lot. But that was a card that interacted. That was an archetype that interacted a lot with the Lost Zone. That was very popular. I think it got it was second place at Worlds. Shintaro Ito. So um, you'd probably find the championship match of yeah. uh, Worlds that year against Henry Brand. But Jake, anyways, Sean. I was going to say, how do you get cards in the Lost Zone? I'm going to set you up. There there are several ways you get cards in the Lost Zone. Let's look at Comfey, a beautiful, lovely Pokemon that came in the Lost Origins set. This is a 70 HP basic psychic Pokemon Rip Fairy because it's a fairy type in the video games, but psychic in the trading card game. Anyways, <laughs> has this ability, which is the reason why you use it, called Flower Selecting. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them in your hand. Put the other in the Lost Zone. So I believe that when we went over the set review last week, we compared this to Amazing Rare Jirachi yep. and its functionality. You know, looking at the top two cards, choosing one, doing something else with the other. Comfey puts it in the Lost Zone. So there's a way that you get one of your seven cards in the Lost Zone, Sean. And that's not the only way. There is this one of card, or I'm sorry, we'll go to the, the four of. Yeah. This is an important supporter in the deck. You're probably using this pretty much every turn at the beginning of the game. You know, your first couple turns. This is like both draw support and Lost Zone support. I yeah. guess you could call it. It's a hop Cor plus loss zone. <laughs> yeah, it's a hop. It's a hop plus two cards in the loss zone. Colris experiment. Look at the top five cards of your deck and put three of them into your hand. Put the others in the loss zone. We've seen cards kind of like this in the past with Hapu from I believe Hapu was in Cosmic Eclipse, where mm -hmm. it was like, look at the top six cards, take three, discard the other three. This one again, kind of like we were saying interacts differently puts the cards instead into the lost zone so you can see three important cards that you really really need put two not important ones you know your battle vip passes after turn one mm -hmm. because this deck plays four battle vip passes so very very cool sean and a very very good supporter as well the only four of supporter in this list you're essentially again trying to use this every turn but there's one more card in this list that we're looking at specifically that interacts with the Lost Zone and putting cards in there. Sean, what is it? That is Lost Vacuum. Um, so you basically, you have to put a card into the Lost Zone in order to play this card. And then when you play the card, you can choose a tool uh, attached to any Pokemon or any stadium in play and then put that into the Lost Zone. So useful for getting rid of, say... A, an annoying stadium you don't want to deal with a battle vip pass <laughs> yeah yeah or um a like you know if somebody has a tool card like a big charm let's say mm -hmm. and they and you need to hit for 280 and you want to knock something out uh, an opposing v star cool do that uh, get rid of a choice belt doesn't really matter but um yeah useful card it is only a one of so it's like it's one of those awkward things where i'm like ah maybe it's useful maybe it's not but certainly you know it's in the deck i guess so fine and i mean like and again to clarify you use the lost vacuum card when you take a card from your hand and put it in the lost zone that's how you activate its effect so but it's it, it it's functionally like field blower mm -hmm. so because you know a lot of times when field blowers around in guardians rising 
Garbodor, the Garbotoxin mm. Garbodor, which when it had an in uh, a tool card attached to it would shut off all abilities. People played like multiple field blowers in their list. Field blower uh, blowing away, you know, item cards and stadium cards, things like that. Va Lost Vacuum makes sense to just be a one of because it's just, you know, there's no dominating item card like that or dominating support Pokemon like that in this deck. So um, it makes sense, I would say, but Sean, what are some other cards? We talked about how you get cards in the Lost Zone, right? Yeah. What are some cards that are specially in like Interact specially with interacted zone? with? Yeah, yeah. That that have cool things that they can do when you have a lot of things in the Lost Zone. So there are two cards, and you can always tell because they have all the the stuff around the edges of the the. Just artwork. like we talked about last week. Yeah, but there are two attacking Pokemon that are very useful in this deck in order to sort of throw off that prize trade. So, you know, Giratina V-Star is your main attacker, but if you can make them take, say, seven instead of six prizes mathematically, uh, you might want to attack with one of these. The first one is Sableye. Uh, it is a basic Pokemon, which is great. It has a one energy attack, which is great. Uh, one psychic energy. You can only use this attack if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. Uh, and if you meet the requirement, you put 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. So, obviously, like, that might finish something off if you... Uh, and, like, also do setup damage for, for the next attack. So you can maybe... If you hit something for, I don't know, 280, I guess, you could put 12 damage counters to finish it off as a VMAX and then set up mm -hmm. the next knockout for the following turn or take out some bench-sitting Pokemon um for a single prize whatever it might be but yeah really great uh sort of backup attacker there and then the second one as a backup attacker is cramorant now this one has the ability if you have four or more cards in the law zone ignore all energy in this pokemon's attack cost because you're not playing water energy in the deck mm -hmm. uh, so this one you can probably I, my guess is you can probably pull this off by the first couple of turns because it's only four. You could honestly, like, if you're going second, there is a chance that you'd be able to pull this off turn one. Yes, 100%. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this Cramorant, it just, it does 110 damage and it's not affected by weakness. That's all. Um, now, you know, it's definitely one of these things where it's like, in and of itself, it's not some crazy card. But as a single prizer that can either set up damage or finish something off and not give your opponent a two prizer to hit into. That's really why it's there. Um, yeah. And looking at those two cards specifically, Sableye and Kramer, you know, you think of why you would use those, you know, to set up knockouts, maybe to do a finishing move on a, a V Max Pokemon or something like that, a V Star. Um, but if you're facing a one prize deck, so for instance, Reggie Gigas, right? The Reggie deck. A lot of those Pokemon you may remember have 130 HP, mm. which is a little out of range for Sableye because there's no Zigzagoons in this list. A little out of range of Cramoran, but combo them together and you can get some pretty cool turns of getting a couple knockouts, things like that. So yep. especially with an ordinary rod in this list, you know, you can use Cramer multiple times. You could use Sableye multiple times, right? Sableye two turns in a row is 240. Right. And if you had used Kramer earlier or something like that, you know, maybe a little bit more damage or the Hisuian Zorark V star, you know, maybe they got some damage counters on themselves yep. because they need damage counters on themselves. So yeah, kind of a cool little set of combo cards. I will say you do use Radiant Greninja to uh, conceal cards and draw more because you're playing the basic energies in this list. Six psychic, six grass, at least in this one specifically with energy recycler in here so you can get energies back for your mirage gate for your conceal cards your just attachments in general um and be able to just constantly string out attacks yes uh and then the only other support pokemon you have a one lumineon and one of i believe this is the new snorlax yes this is the new snorlax in lost origin yep. unfazed fat prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's pokemon done to this pokemon yeah yeah <laughs> i mean yeah i, I it's I'm, there it's there I'm not for sure. reasons yeah like I, i'm sure there are reasons 
I'm not sure what those reasons are, Jake, but I'm sure there are reasons. Uh, there, I mean, they're there. They're up in Adam. And anyway, Sean, let's move on to the okay. next thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that's a cool deck list. I think that one is probably like the deck everybody was hyped about. We'll see how it mm -hmm. evolves. Maybe you don't need a 4-3 line of the Giratina V and V-Star. Whoa, actually, this is weird, Jake. There's a 3-4 line, not a 4-3. Yeah, three. I saw that, too. I'm not 100% sure why that is when I was uh, looking at the deck. So <laughs> I can't really tell you why, I don't truthfully. Know. I don't know why. But and there's it, no Ultra it's, Balls. You I don't know, know. <laughs> Sean, sometimes people make decks that work, and the yeah. only thing that you can say is, well, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, Probably clearly. also because, so here's my thinking on it. You know, you're playing Comfe, mm -hmm. right? You want to probably start Comfe as many times as possible. You're playing four nets, you're playing an air balloon, you're playing a switch card. You can get Comfe out of the active more often than not, I would say. Yeah. So you start the Comfe, you're probably going to have the ability with four quick balls, a Sui and heavy ball four to be able VIP. to find and four battle VIP passes to be able to get Tina's onto the bench as soon as possible. And, you know, you're raiding Greninja, things like that. And so then you can focus on getting cards into the lost zone a lot faster, right? Because, I mean, let's think about it, Sean. You've got an ordinary rod in this list, so you can always fish back in the Garatina V-Stars and the Vs, you know, to be able to constantly string in Pokemon. But remember, three V, V-Star knockouts, that means the game is over. So that's true. Do you really need more than three, honestly? So then you can consistently or more consistently, I should say, start Comfe and get stuff in the Lost Zone a lot faster. That's true. And then it also gives you the ability to just start. You can Lost Zone some of the Garatinas V-Stars if you mm -hmm. need. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Jake, it's something that like I looked at and I was like, "What? Huh?" And then I was like, "Okay, that makes sense." Jake, I believe there was only one other deck that I wanted to talk about for this early format. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's this one here. This one is from Tassan 58. <laughs> uh, went 4 and 3. So, it is also a lost zone oriented deck, but mm -hmm. with uh, a very wild strategy um, there's a lot going on here yeah so this is one where i'm like i'm actually not sure if this is a good deck or not but it did okay and it's like, a cool one yeah and also it's a deck so okay for those of you who are listening and not looking it is a single prize deck that does deal with the lost zone in many ways but it also has other single prize pokemon and it kind of like it like does some damage spread. It does some acceleration and like it's yeah, very strange. So personally, I think this is meant to be like a spread deck, right? Okay. You are playing three of the new Lost Origin Sableye, so putting damage counters in places. Mm -hmm. You are setting up damage with the Cramorant that we talked about earlier in the Garatina list, right? Setting up one ten. You've got this Kyogre from Celebrations. A lot of people may remember this deck, the like 40 energy Kyogre deck with Aqua Storm, and you just place bunches of damage any everywhere for two water and a colorless. Discard the top five cards of your deck, then choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This deck does 50 damage for each energy card you discarded in this way to each of those Pokemon. So doing at most 250 damage to two Pokemon on the bench which is crazy and because you're playing water pokemon right with water energies radiant greninja with moonlight shuriken does 90 to two different pokemon on the field and so that's kind of what i think that this deck is trying to do it's trying to use these kind of spread pokemon early you know set up damage with kramer and maybe get some kyogre in there some radiant greninja and then just go ahead and Sableye, you know, finish off all those Pokemon for like six prize move, multi prize knockouts, um, things like that. And you've also got this Ice Q in there, this cute little Ice Q that I see you showing. Block Face. For those of you that don't know, this is the uh, 
Reggie stopper that a lot of people started using before Lost Origin came out. Uh, during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon. So defeating the Reggie, the Reggie deck. One little ice cube, just stopping Dude, all of the Reggie deck. Any like pure milk tank deck or Reggie deck, just mm -hmm. lose. Yep. Um, and that costs one water, two colorless energy for 70 damage, but you don't really care as much about the damage. Um, it's interesting as well because Mirage Gate, right? We talked about Mirage Gate earlier. That specifically says you can attach them to your Pokemon in any way you'd like. So it doesn't say, you know, Lost Zone Pokemon or anything yeah. like that. It's just Pokemon in general. And so this deck also runs the four of Colrus. You know, it runs the four of Comfe that we talked about in the Tina list. So getting those cards in the Lost Zone to be able to activate Mirage Gate and stuff is pretty easy and you're playing two ordinary rods two energy recyclers as well so you can constantly feed those one price pokemon very cool list to come out of the first weekend yeah yeah no it's uh definitely an interesting interesting deck list i mean i know i've seen a lot of uh videos i haven't actually watched them but also hyping up cramorant as yes. like a no energy attacker so yeah jake and i both talked about i think this during our set list uh, go listen to that if you haven't. But I think Sableye, we saw, we said like, hey, 12 damage counters is crazy. So if you can meet those requirements, like that's nuts. Yeah, Cram but it's just high. Yeah, it's <laughs> 10 cards in the lost yeah, I mean, zone. So. Well, I mean, it's a high requirement, but also Pokemon are thick these days. Yeah, Pokemon be thick. Uh, With being three a single, Cs. Being a single prize deck helps, but yeah, Pokemon mm -hmm. be thick. Uh, but the, the Cramorant being able to attack for free, anytime you can have a deck that attacks for any kind of meaningful damage for free is huge. So pairing that with Sableye, I guess, makes sense. The one card that I, I I would love to see people experiment with, maybe it's just bad, but is the the Trevenant that we talked about. Because, oh, okay. Yeah, in terms of pairing either the Sableye or the Cramorant with another Pokemon, I think the Trevenant would be interesting. That's the one that doesn't give up a prize card. I believe yes. if it gets knocked out by these. I I mean, I think it's it's just at all. I don't know. I can't remember, actually. But I will say, I think the yeah. reason that people, you know, haven't tried it out yet, at least, is because you got to evolve yeah, those people. Um, and so, like, all these Pokemon that you're seeing right now in this basics. list. Um, yeah, they're just all basics. There's one. There are ones that you can slap down real easily and go. I mean, there's not even a Rhyhon in this list. Yeah, that's true. No Raihan, just the Mirage Gates to power things up. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, cool lists all around. Jake, did you have uh, any other list that caught your eye? I know. Uh, I didn't. I mean, I've been real busy this fine. weekend. The one, the one that I wanted to talk about was Hisui and Zorark because. I will be the first to admit we were wrong about that card, at yeah. least in the opening weekend, because again, you know, as time goes on, just like we say every single set, the meta will evolve, right? Just like our podcast that revolves around the evolving meta will tell you when things change, will tell you when things get different. But for now, Sean, that's all. Apologize on YouTube. <laughs> um, I forgot to upload last week's podcast um, on YouTube after we recorded and I edited and stuff. We got... Uh, we had some news in our department that was stuff that I had to I had to I had to jump on really, really quick. So um, it kind of got lost in the sauce, but it should be releasing Monday, which is yesterday when this comes out. Anyways, you'll get two days in a row of videos. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, you'll get two days in a row of podcasts and you'll get the set review before we talk about the deck list. So it's all it all comes in perfect circle, Sean. But are you good? <laughs> I'm good. I am good, Jake. Thank you so much for listening to the Metapod Podcast, the Pokemon Podcast, and we're all the evolving meta. Have a great week. Keep playing.